In this tutorial, you're gonna learn a fun and easy way to make this sort of surreal, circular, quirky portrait. In this case, for me, a self-portrait. To achieve this effect, we're gonna create these sort of magnified circular bits of the portrait simply by creating circular layer masks. Then we're gonna create contrast and make the circular bits pop with levels and drop shadows. We're also gonna apply texture and a nice sepia tone to tie it all together. This is a fairly easy tutorial, although you are gonna to wanna to understand the basics of layers and masks before you dive into this one. I've got a video that can help you with that. But if you already feel comfortable with layers and masks, let's get started. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a new document. Come up to File, New, and let's just call this Portrait. I'm gonna set my width to 1080 and my height to 1350, and these are pixels. Go to your Finder or your Explorer and grab the image that you're gonna be working with and drag it on into the document. With the Transform box selected, hold down Alt as you scale your image up then you can position it wherever you'd like it. Now to create these circle cutouts of my face, we're just gonna use layer masks. So right away, let's just call this layer, we'll double click and call it original. To create the first circle, we're gonna wanna duplicate the original layer by hitting Control or Command J. Come over to your elliptical marquee tool, or you can just hit M and just draw a circle around the left eye, or I guess it would be my right eye, but it's on the left side for me. So we're gonna call this left eye. And this is not a science, it's an art, so you don't have to be precise. Just draw around about where you want it. Hold down shift to keep a perfect circle as you drag your selection. Once you have the selection the way you want it, come on down to create new layer mask. And if you just hit the eyeball on the original layer, you'll see that we have created a perfect circle layer mask on that. Let's call it left eye layer. Turn your original layer back on. So now we wanna scale this left eye down a bit. So hit Control or Command T and hold down Alt as you scale it down. Holding Alt will just keep it centered as you scale. Position it round about where you'd like it and then hit enter. Go back down to the original image and we're gonna create a new layer mask with the other eye. So hit Control or Command J to duplicate that original layer. And again, come over to your elliptical marquee tool, click and drag and hold shift as you do that. Grab the other eye, come down to create new layer mask. And again, Control or Command T and let's scale this one up. Just position it where you'd like it. Oh, mine right there. Now we're gonna do this one more time for around about the chin area. So come back down to the original layer, Control or Command J once again, and once again, the elliptical marquee tool. We're gonna just drag out an area that we find interesting. This could be totally different on your face. You can highlight whichever bits you want. Come on down to create new layer mask again, Control or Command T to transform and hold Alt as you scale this part up. About right there. Hit enter. Now let's warm this baby up. We're gonna add some color. Now there are a ton of ways that you can add color in Photoshop, but one of the more unconventional ways is by bringing in a texture. And I love to do this. And I really love like browns and sepias and old vintage looking textures. So that's what we're gonna do here. But you can use whatever kind of textures and colors you want. Now I get a lot of my textures and images from a place called Envato Elements, which is like a paid subscription. So I'm gonna use those here, but I'm also gonna provide links in the description below for places that you can find free textures and images and things like that. So feel free to explore those and find some good textures that you wanna work with and then come back. So before I drag in this texture, I'm gonna come back down to the original image because I wanna drag the texture directly above that layer. And in order to do that, I have to have that layer selected because every time you drag something in, it's always going to appear on the layer above the layer that you have selected. So the texture that I'm gonna use is like this old folded vintage paper. And I think it's really cool. I want this texture to only affect the background. It's just a way to kind of separate things. It's just a stylistic choice. I'm gonna scale it up to fit the entire composition, hit enter. And now we're gonna explore some blending modes. So what are some cool ways that we can apply this texture? If you notice, every single blending mode creates a different kind of effect with the same texture layer. For this one, I think I settled on, yeah, I think it was linear burn, but I felt like the effect was a bit too strong. So I just went ahead and brought the opacity down. I think it was like 50% that I liked. Yeah, so that looks really cool. So another way to amplify this contrast is by contrasting the light and the dark. What we're gonna do is just apply a levels effect, if you will, to these three circular magnified bits of the image. We're going to select all of these layers that have the circle masks come down here to this little folder, 
or you can just hit Control or Command G and that'll group them all together. So let's call this group Circles. Now let's come down and grab a Levels Adjustment Layer and right away we're going to clip this adjustment layer to the layer beneath it, which is that Circles group. To clip the levels to the Circles group, you can either click this Clipping Mask button or you can come over to the layers and hit Control Alt G and that'll clip it as well. So now whatever adjustments we make to this Levels layer is only going to affect that circles group. Double click on this little icon here to get back to your levels. Grab this slider on the right and drag it over to the left until the number is somewhere between 200, 205, around about there. Now what that did is just expanded the brightest levels on the image. For the sake of example, I'll show you. If you take the slider on the far left and drag it over to the right, you'll see that it's expanding the darkest bits of the image. So we don't want that. Let's drag that all the way back. That's just to show you what it's doing. So you can see what a contrast that just created just by applying those levels there. But I actually wanna create even more contrast. And to do that, we're gonna create some drop shadows. Click this little arrow guy to open up your circles group and click on the left eye. I didn't even rename this one. Good Lord, right eye. Click on the left eye layer and then come down here to effects. And you'll see an effect right at the very bottom there called drop shadow. Click that guy. And now you can see if you click this little check mark off and on, you can see what that's doing there is creating a drop shadow. So let's adjust this a little bit. I think it looks a little too harsh in my opinion. Let's make the distance about eight. This kind of keeps it close closer to the circle and not so far out. Spread is fine. Let's adjust the size. Make it like 20, 21, somewhere around there. So it's not so big. That looks good to me. So I'm gonna say, okay. Now I'm gonna come down to my right eye. I'm gonna do the same thing. Come down to effects, drop shadow. And it should have the settings the same as you had them on the last one. So all you have to do here is just say, okay. Now something that you can do here is just right click on the right eye layer and then come down to copy layer style. And if you come to the, um, this should be called chin. I have been slacking on my layer naming. So if you just right click on that chin layer and hit paste layer style, bam, pasted it exactly the way it was on the other layer. So that looks really cool. Those circles are really popping. Now all we gotta do is just add some texture to tie this all together. Again, I'm just gonna use the textures that I got from Envato, but you can use whatever textures you want. Go ahead and drag that guy on in. Move it to where you want it to be and scale it up so that fits the whole composition. Now we're gonna play around with some blending modes again. This is the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but like this is a super fun part. I love playing around with blending modes. You just click on one of them and then you hit your down arrow key or up arrow key. You can uh, toggle through these blending modes pretty quickly. So I think what I settled on here, soft light. I really like that one. If you get stuck in your blending mode, just hit escape. I like the way that looks as is. I'm not gonna adjust the opacity or anything. I think that looks really good. I am gonna bring in one more texture though to tie everything together even more. I'm gonna bring in this dark, really like grungy, sort of looks like cloth that's been stained. I just love it. And I'm gonna play around with these a bit and see what I like. I think for this one, gosh, so many of them look cool, but I think I'm gonna go with green. Yeah, I really like what that does to the background behind my face. But this one is a bit much for me. I am going to adjust the opacity here. I want this to be kind of subtle. Let's do like 40. How's that? Yeah, let's do 40. Now that looks awesome in my opinion. I love the contrast, the textures, the color. I really just love this. And it really wasn't that hard. I mean, it was quite a few steps, but nothing too crazy. So there you go, just a fun, surreal portrait. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something new in this tutorial that you can apply in your future projects. We've covered everything from masks, to blending modes, to clipping masks, to grouping layers. That's quite a lot you've got in your tool belt now. Follow along for more and feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions. Until next time.